Hey, Sean Gans here. I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Tuesday, January 14th. And I'm going to do it on Slash CS, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on Slash CS. And every single evening, I always start on the four-hour charts, what I call the bird's eye view. And as far as the day trader goes, this is the most and single important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought? Oversold or equilibrium. And understanding what our bias is can help us on what's likely, since all the market does is cycle, it can help us on what's likely to come in the next 12 to 24 hours, right? In terms of the bias, down, down, up, or sideways. And so a little bit of a recap today. We did have a little bit of a move broke all brand new all-time highs. And a lot of the move came in the last two hours, one hour of the trading day because of this headline that came out. Right, record highs after the US war move. Currency manipulator tag from China. Don't really care about this, but this is on CNBC if you want to read about it. Uh, but obviously, that was positive in the China trade talk deal. So, we're currently sitting right now at all time high. I mean, these bulls are the most relentless thing I've ever seen, ever, and it really is the most relentless thing in the history of the stock market. It's pretty crazy. Um, I, I, uh, there's especially NASDAQ. I've never really, no one has actually ever seen something like this. It's pretty crazy. And a lot of people are kind of um, reminiscing around kind of the uh, 98, 99 type of uh, market here. It's kind of nuts. But you can see all time high, we're severely, severely uh, overbought, right? Now, if the market continues to surge tomorrow, I'm not going to do anything up there. I'm just going to let it go. There's no structure up here since the beginning of time. So obviously there's quite a bit of structure to the downside if the market does want to cycle. Hopefully it does. I would say roughly 3280 would kind of be one of the first nice levels. And we start getting through there. We'll have we'll have obviously all that structures down here from 65 to 60 as well. So when we move here to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, no more indicators. And what I'm looking for here is just structure. I'm looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. I'm looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single level if this market continues to go higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single level if this market starts dumping to the downside? So let's first talk about if we go higher. Already kind of touched on it. Now you do have 3,300 plus 0.5 right there for possible resistance. Me personally, I'm going to hold off looking to do anything up here. That doesn't mean you have to. I just always want to trade where there's structure to the left because it just helps increase probability of success. Okay. Now, if we go lower, that's where the bias is. I hope that's what happens if we do go lower, okay? Uh, we kind of talked about the big target, and I say big, but first target, and you can kind of see all of the context right here. We got a negative 0.5, we got two POCs and a value rate low. And so there could be an opportunity if these bears want to start running tomorrow for a breakout and then hold pullback, right? So break out, hold pullback, and then quarter deviation for, for, for stop loss. And then you can use a quarter deviation for first take profit. And then you can lock and trail to, into all of this context right there. So that would be touch brackets, opportunity, or traditional uh, futures. This would qualify for potentially first level of demand. It's not terrible. Obviously, there's a lot of context going on there. Uh, but you have to understand, if you're going to buy here tomorrow, you're still buying at a really overbought chart, right? So they always say buy low, sell high. If you're going to buy there, just be prepared to get to let the market dump on you, right? So kind of see how the market is actually cycling better so far at the beginning of this year. And you can see how these bears cycle down, cycle down, cycle down, cycle down. I think me personally, I would rather see... a. Um, Pulling back into this level here for, for my first demand, wait for change control, right? Make sure the buy triggers are forming. Even then, we're still buying uh, at this range high. And then, uh, I mean, clearly, we get a really large dump tomorrow, which would be awesome. There is structure down here for negative one and a halves and or negative twos, where you can scalp off of those deviations as long as you're seeing change control. NQ, relentless right now. Holy cow. The good news about NQ, though, is that it does have good overlapping structure. So here's kind of what I mean. If it goes higher, I won't do anything up there. But 
Overlapping structure, the really good overlapping structures right there. Value rate low, Friday POC, 9,000, negative one. That's like holy grail, target tomorrow, like freaking awesome if I can catch it. But the key is going to be if I can catch it, right? So first level, obviously these bears were, would at least want to run into value rate high, negative 0.5, and then it's decision time from there. So it used to be all-time high, then these bulls broke out. More than likely, and it may not happen tomorrow, but this this level, this 90-50 level, will still be relevant in the next coming days. If these bears start running back down, this is where they're going to want to come back to. So you can kind of see how this works. Resistance, uh, and then breakout, and then price will want to fade back to that. Now, uh, it may be kind of hard to catch that. Uh, you know, you could use set for a line in the sand. First TP at value high, and then lock in and trail in for the negative 0.5 Monday POC. And then if these bears are really strong here, I mean, that's a lot of profit potential for an 80% rule. It just may be difficult to catch, maybe hard to find some pullbacks. And so that's kind of where your experience needs to come uh, into play. Uh, obviously, this would qualify for first level of demand if it tanks. There's quite a bit of structure there for negative one and a halfs and or negative twos. Uh, YM a little different, right? Different in terms of there's actually some good structure if this market goes higher, and I'll hold off if it breaks plus 0.5. Decent level of first level demand, negative 0.5. There's a POC. You got some pockets of demand sitting around negative one Wednesday. Then obviously there's your structure there for negative one and a half, negative twos. RTY, same thing, and it, same thing closer to YM. You got first and second, which I like the second obviously a lot better. And then value rate low, and then there's quite a bit of demand sitting on that negative one and even in the negative one and a half. So RTYYM, by far my two favorite charts. ES and NQ are just relentless right now. And so they're kind of obviously in levels where markets has never been. And so I'm going to be looking at these two. And then, of course, don't forget, we have deviations on the four major Forex pairs. You can see that right here. We have deviations and value rate on crude oil as well. So there's nine charts with deviations. There's always action somewhere at 3 a.m. Eastern is when the London market opens is when you're going to see, start seeing some more volume. So message me or Ryan Smith if you have any questions and take pictures and record all of your trades and post them in the uh, Trader Tribe in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.